Hey guys, it's Nick from Card Overflow here. I just got back from a giant hand tournament held at one of the local stores uh, I go to, and I ended up winning it. Uh, even though it was just a local size uh, tournament, I went to go over the deck I was kind of playing for the format so far, and then kind of the changes and modifications and everything that went with it. So for the most part, in the last couple of weeks, I've been playing Draco Metal Foe. I think it's really great. Uh, I really, really like Masterpiece, honestly. Um, that's probably where my bias in playing this deck comes in. And a few friends of mine have been debating between what variants of Draco Metal Foe has been the best. So, I was really a big advocate for the streamlined version of uh, Maximizing Rescue Hamster, as well as uh, a third Masterpiece compared to just two in like a typical build. While my friend really advocated for a Armageddon Knight version of the build where your turn would start off by summoning Armageddon Knight and it results in uh, bringing out a Yazi as well as a Marimara to make Saryuja prior to Pendulum summoning, which does, which is really, really strong. But the reason why I kind of uh, gravitated towards more of a rescue streamlined version is when you open hands with, say, Armageddon Knight, and even in this card to Rescue Rabbit, the reason why I have two of it, is when you open with your hand and it results as a monster that needs to be normal summoned, your play needs for that to occur first before other things can occur. So in the sense of Rescue Rabbit, I have to normal summon it, Pendulum, to, or spring out two monsters, make an Electromite before I can Pendulum summon or something. Well, when you're drawing a card like Rescue Hamster, uh, even though it might not be as powerful as Armageddon Knight resolving fully, you have the option between having two effects. So your plays have small, um, it opens up smaller trees in your decisions that allow you to do extra things. And the big thing I always advocate for in this deck is saving your normal summon for Masterpiece. When you play throughout um, your setup, there's times when you want to draw a lot of metal foes to set up your combinations very quickly. So a lot of my masterpieces end up being double trap. And when you tribute these, you get a lot of value to eat more metal foes to your hand, which allows you to pendulum summon. So let me go through the deck list real quick and I'll explain more. I play uh, 12 metal foes. And what I tried for this tournament was two purple poison magicians. Uh, there's a player that has been topping, uh, I think the last two YCSs actually, with uh Draco Metalfo, and he included Purple Poison into the deck. Uh, Purple Poison did a lot of really cool things when you were going second. For example, against like a dinosaur board or a Draco board, or just kind of any board in general, when you set Purple Poison, you want your Metalfo to get value off the first pop. It's great when you have like Metalfo, Metalfo, but that first Metalfo you're destroying with the second one won't get any value in destroying a card. So Purple Poison fills in that spot, but also... It does take away card from your opponent, which is really cool. I did want to win a few games with this kind of destroying anti-spell and just other kind of big problem monsters. Uh, I cut Rescue Rabbit down to two, because again, I talked about the normal summoning. Uh, it's really bad when you draw two of these sometimes. And when you summon it and you get Effect Veil, that it's pretty rough too. Uh, it's still a great starter card, but so many things have to go correct for it to be great. <clears throat> Rescue Hamster is really good. It's a great recovery card. And then when you're kind of comboing through, uh, what Rescue Hamster lets you do is after you make a Mithrillium to balance your diagram and all that, it allows you your extra metal foes to make that Mithrillium become a Alkahes later on, which is pretty cool. Um, again, the third Masterpiece. How I always talk about it too is when people play Masterpiece, they always treat Masterpiece like it's a Cliff Fort Towers. And in this deck, how I say it's like, you don't treat Masterpiece like a tower, you treat it more like a Dryden. So it's okay to have a Trap Trap Masterpiece by distributing two combinations. Your opponent's supposed to deal with a card that has an interacting opponent's turn. But at the same time, your deck has other plays that are in other cards that, in conjunction, make the, the greater play better, rather than the singular Masterpiece good. If that makes sense. And Astrograph's probably the best card in the entire deck. Whenever one of your cards will be destroyed, you can just resolve Astrograph and get a plus... A million. So my change in the deck is I have three Draco Heritage in the deck too. So like I said before, when you have double scale for metal foes, you want the most value for your metal foes as possible. So when you play Drew Heritage and then a metal foe, 
you destroy heritage, it sets a combination, and then on new chain link, heritage destroys a combination to complete your scales. Even though that's not the greatest play in the world, what it does is it gives you more metal foes to your hand as you need them. It gives your first metal foe a uh, value by destroying something prior to it getting destroyed. And thirdly, if you ever draw two, it acts like an upstart goblin in the deck. And the upstart, upstart goblin is actually really, really good in this deck. Um, the reason being is you your deck is kind of mediocre if you don't draw one of your nine Draco cards. And what does I mean by that? It's like uh, Diagram, Terraforming, or Masterpiece. So you save your entire normal summon to kind of combo off. And in your natural combo with going through Electromite and going through um, Metaphor's Fusion... Your deck gets you two draws, so you want to thin the deck as much as possible, getting all your combinations and metaphors out before activating like pseudo upstart goblins, such as Heritage, such as like your regular upstart goblin, to draw one of your nine. And then once you have your um, one of your nine, it's, it's really great. Uh, the safest one to draw is Masterpiece because it plays through hand traps. Like your opponent can't Ash or Ghost Ogre um, a Masterpiece of summoning. And then on your opponent's turn, they still have to deal with Masterpiece and then whatever your Metal Foe board kind of accumulated during your process. So then, uh, that's why I really like uh, Heritage. It's also really great against True Draco, the decks that are again, kind of out right now too. Like hard drawing, uh, a Spell Trap, and then a Masterpiece, or just anything in a Masterpiece is really, really good to start your turn off of. Like prior to the Pendulum Summon. Then you have your Diagram, Terraforming, um, and then... The four, the one of its summoners are a painful decision, upstart and metaphose fusion. Uh, upstart's really important for that sense, too. Like, it's not a card when you draw it, you play it right away. You kind of thin your deck out as small as possible in your goals of drawing a diagram or masterpiece again. <clears throat> so, the traps will play three combination and one return. Um, I think we had some talk about Apocalypse being in the deck, but I think Return is still really good. When you have an additional search, and just one, when you have a Masterpiece on board already, I like to search Return in case my Masterpiece is destroyed. Uh, it gives you a safe layer to not die that turn. It, that's all it is. This is my extra deck. I do want to make a few changes to this. So here are the Metal Foes. I have two Electromite, two Mithrilium, Orichalc, and Alkahest. Uh, I had three Electromite in the deck for a long time. And for whatever reason, this tournament, I just took it out. Um, Electromite's really good when you go play, like, say, Rescue Rabbit, and you make Electromite. And there's times in the deck where you have the luxury of not having to activate the send effect on the first Electromite. And when you Pendulum the two, you can, uh, the two from Rescue Rabbit back, at that point you can make a second Electromite, and the Electromite then, therefore, can use its full effect. And the great thing about Electromite is he's a metal foe, so you can resolve it with fusion to make your all your fusion guys, which is really good. Um, even though the third doesn't come up all the time, uh, you play a lot of cards where you will never make, like do little Chimera and stuff. So you can probably cut that for the third one again. Um, even though it doesn't come up a lot, it comes up enough to where you would want a third one if you needed one. Uh, same with Mithrilium. Uh, Mithrilium is great. Um, Again, everyone says you can put cards back with Mithrilium, but again, you don't want to unoptimize your play by your deckless choice for cards that you will never make. Again, just such as like, I know Underclock is important, but like Doolittle Chimera. Uh, I played two Dweller this tournament. I don't know why I did. Dweller is really great. It's it's definitely a really, really good card, but uh, I don't know if you need to. And then uh, Doolittle, Underclock, Zephra, Borlo, these are all really important. And then these are your other really important guys. These two more so than Tornado. But Tornado is still really good. Uh, my side deck real quick. It's 3 Ash, 2 Ogre, 2 Deflector, 3 D Barrier, 1 Evenly, 1 Raw Seer Mode, and 2 Twin Twister. Uh, if I had to change anything, I would put a 3rd Ogre in. The Hand Traps are really good. I'd also put a 3rd Deflector in. I would take out Evenly Match. It wasn't really that strong at all. Uh, and then also, I would probably play Typhoon. Raw Seer Mode never came in, but I think it was fine in the side deck so overall this is my entire deck um i did get the giant hand it was really cool um if you have any questions feel free to ask thank you